Hello everyone and welcome back to our fintech journey with FinGrid. In the last episode, we started by understanding what makes the fintech industry so unique. Today, we are rolling up our sleeves and getting ready to code. In this episode, we are setting up our Golang and Nurse.js environments, our tool of choice for this adventure. We are going to dive deep into the installation process, discuss why we choose Golang and Nurse.js, and take a look at some of the core concepts we'll be using throughout our journey. It's like checking our map before we set sail. But what's our destination, you may ask? Well, in our next episode, we'll be tackling our first major landmark, the user module. This is where we'll handle user prod operations, manage user data, and lay the foundation for application security with an authentication and authorization flow. So, are you ready to end back on this exciting journey? Let's get our environment set up and ready to grow. So just before we get into the environment setup, Golang with its simplicity and efficiency makes it a perfect fit for our backend application. It is statically typed and compiled, which gives us the benefit of catching errors any during compile time. Moreover, it's perfect for building scalable and high performance application something we strive for in the fintech world. On the other side, we have Nest.js for our front-end. Nest.js offers a great developer experience with features like auth code reload, automatic routing, and universal rendering. Plus, it's based on React, which gives us the power of component-based architecture, making our app more maintainable and scalable. So, we've picked our tools carefully to create a robust, scalable, and efficient fintech application. So now with that said, let's get up into the setup. Alright guys, um, currently on our screen is the Go website, and this is what it looks like. It looks better than what it used to be when it came out. And all you want to do here, if you don't have Go set up yet, is to click on the download link. And this is going to take you to a page where you have the list of versions of Go you can install. So depending on your operating system, you can select from all these options. So in my case, I'll be using the Mac OS Silicon version based on my operating system. So I won't be downloading that because I already have it set up, but I'll recommend we do this if we don't have uh, it installed yet. So you can click on whichever your operating system is and it's going to download it. And once it's downloaded, you can click on the file and install it directly. So that's all you need to do there. Then after that, you can click on any of this link to actually learn on Go. But why bother about that when you have me here to take you over some of the concepts, okay? Um, however, though, this is not going to be a completely beginner's tutorial because you can trust me if we are going to make it completely beginner's, then we are going to spend so much time here. Notwithstanding, we are going to make things as um, simple as possible. So yeah, you can still follow through. So with that said, by now you have your Go compiler installed. The next thing you want to do is to have a coder. You want to have a code editor. And in this case, I think by now, most people are kind of leaning towards the VS code. We have other better IDE there, but VS code just seems to tick all the boss we'll need. And for the fact that it's actually free, makes it just the number one out there. So we'll be using VS Code. And the reason why I'm pointing out this is that we need to actually set up VS Code in a manner that it makes writing Golang very easy. So yeah, I already have VS Code installed as well. And if you don't have it, you can as well download whichever version you want. So now that we've discussed about that, let me open my VS Code and tell us what extensions we would need to install to be able to write Go code seamlessly. All right, so on the screen now is my VS Code screen. And um, technically, when you click on this, you get to work with your files. We don't have any yet, and it's saying that we can actually open a folder. We won't really bother about that. So next thing you want to do is to come down to the extension site and type Go. So this is going to give you options of Go extensions. And you want to stick with the one with the 10 million downloads. As you can see, if I over on it, it shows you the number of downloads it has. And once you click on this and you install it, after installing it, it's going to prompt you to install some other extensions. So let me see if I can bring that up. So yeah, once you're done installing this, it's going to bring you all these options. 
So what you want to do is just click on select all and you install all. Okay. So once you have that, you are kind of set to start working with group. And the next thing I would actually like to do is to create a folder and actually have a folder for our backend and projects. So yeah, we are done with this. Come back to our desktop, create a folder. So yeah, this is my Fingit folder and within here I'm going to have the backend. So yeah, this is the backend and as you know, we are going to be using Go to achieve this. So now we can go back within our VS Code and actually come back here and open folder. So we want to come back to the desktop and locate Fingit and backend. So that's the folder we want to open. So one way to share that you have Go compiler installed is to pull up your terminal like this. You can use any of the terminals. So this is terminal within VS Code. And you can just type Go. And it's going to bring this option. So if you type this and your terminal says it doesn't recognize that command, then it means Go is not available in your system. So yeah, this is a way to know that you've installed Go. All right, so that's done. So the next thing I want to do here is just type in main or rather tosh main.group. So I'm creating a file called main.group. And the way Go works is it needs an entry point. So in terms of JavaScript, JavaScript doesn't really need an entry point, but we tend to kind of um, specify that the entry point is index.js. But since GoLang is a compiled lang, when it compiles, it looks for the main.go file as its entry point. And that's why we used to define the main.go file. So when I touch this, this is going to create a main.go file within my backend folder. And in here, I can create this quick structure. I can give it a package. And we're going to talk about that later on. This is more of just setting up the environment. And I'll call it package main. All right, so now we need an import. So because we are going to print out something and what we want to print can only be printed with this import. So we are going to import it and it's called FMT. Some people call it FIMT, but yeah, FMT just makes more sense. So finally, we can have a function main, which is our entry point. And with FIMT, we can do FMT.printLine, hello world, or other hello thing grids. Okay, so now we can run this program by typing go run main.group. And as you can see from our prompts, it brought out hello thing grids. So here we have go set up. However, we will be using only go to achieve our aim. We will also be working with database because that's where we store all our information, and that's quite important. So that note, if we go back to our browser and we we'll click on the tabs I've opened up, in this case, go migrate, we are going to need this package, okay? And we'll be wondering what exactly do we want to use this for? Because most times you want to use tools like GUM, which is GoRM with Jane and so on. And because of that, you will need to install something like go migrate. Well, I'm happy to tell you that we would not be going through the route of GUM. And that is because GUM processes are kind of slow. They may be quite readable and more friendly, but because we are trying to build a fintech app and performance is our priority, so we want to start our foundation at a very performance level. So based on that, we are going to be handling our migrations ourselves. So with this tool, we'll be able to create our migrations, then also make migrations to our databases, okay? And to install migrates, all you have to do is View install GoLang Migrate for macOS, for Windows. So literally, you get to see all the options available to you. So don't bother about trying to cram up the link. You can if you want, but I'll provide the link in the description so you can just copy it and access it. Okay, so that's the first two. And again, to confirm that you have it installed, you can type in Migrate and it's going to actually bring out something. So this is telling me that, okay, it recognizes my grids, even though I'm not doing it the right way. So yeah, that's about my grids. Then the next tool on the line is SQLC. So now this is still kind of handling the same situation with GUM. So SQLC is just like you are working with direct SQL, which makes your watch so fast, okay? That's the pinnacle of performance. 
However, you will now have an helper because you don't want to directly work with SQL anyways. It's going to be too tiring. So with SQLC, you can write basic SQLs and you get the necessary codes out of the box. So again, we are going to be using SQLC and you can get started by clicking get started. Also, you will need to install SQLC. And to install SQLC again, you have your options. We have for macOS, we have for Ubuntu and so on. Okay. So again, you can come back to your code and confirm that you have SQLC installed by typing SQLC. Again, it's going to confirm that this exists. So once we have those installed, I think we are kind of prepared to tackle the Golang aspects for our backend creation. So we are done with Golang. And our next operation now is going to be with our front end. And this is where Nest.js comes in. So yeah, this is the website of Nest.js. And I think by now Nest.js is quite popular and should be quite popular amongst us. So it shouldn't be a big deal explaining what it does. It's a front end framework based on React.js. Okay. So all you need to know now is how to install it. And it's quite straightforward. You just copy all this as I'm doing, come back to your folder. So now within our thing grid, I'm actually going to open a terminal here. Then I'll locate my thing grid directory. Okay. So now we are within the thing grid directory. So now I can post what I've copied. However, I can still specify the folder name itself. So if you do not specify, it's just going to create something for you, but you can specify the folder name you want to create. And I'll call this front end. Now click yes, and it's going to go through the process. So I'll click yes again. Yes, all true. All right, so our installation is done. And now we can proceed into the folder. So CD into front end. And we can also type in code, then dots. And this is also going to open it up in VS Code. And this is our file structure. And what we want to do now is to pull up our terminal and do yarn dev. So if you are using npm, you can use npm run dev, whichever you are comfortable with. So I'm using yarn and I'm going with yarn dev. And now it has started as Tava running on port 3000. So I'm going to click on this. Then it's going to come up on my browser. And here we have the new Nest.js um, default page, which looks cool. Okay. So on this note, we are done with our environment. Okay. So we are ready to tackle the next episode. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to show your support with a thumbs up and share it with your fellow tech enthusiasts. And remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications to stay updated on our fintech adventure. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll start building the user module for our fin great platform. Until then, happy coding and see you next time.